Go interfaces are amazing. Let me show you why. First things first, let's talk about what are interfaces in Golang. If you come from other languages, mainly object-oriented languages, you have probably have seen the interface keyword before. An interface in a language like TypeScript acts as a way to define the structure of an object, specifying the methods and properties it must have without providing implementation details. Go's interfaces are fairly similar to that of TypeScript, except they only allow methods to be specified. Let me just show you a basic example. Here I define an interface type called shape. It has one method called area that returns an integer. Then I define a struct type called rect, short for rectangle, that has two properties, x and y. Here again I define another struct but called square with only one property, length. I give the rectangle struct a member function, area, that has the same signature as the method inside the interface. Then again, same for the square struct. In main, I define a variable shape that has the type of shape. As you can see, I can assign the rectangle struct to the shape variable, and I can do the same for the square struct, as they both match the requirements of the interface. With that, I can create a function that takes the shape interface as a parameter and pass the variable shape to it. As you can see, it works. Damn, that was a lot of word shape. But hopefully, you get the idea, right? You may have noticed that interfaces in Go are implicit unlike in TypeScript where they are explicit. This can get confusing, but they still work great. But wait, let's take a look at that code again. Both structs are referenced, but why? In Go, interfaces are pointers. Well, technically interfaces are not explicitly pointers themselves, but they often involve pointers due to how they work under the hood. An interface in Go is a two-part structure. It holds the type information of the concrete value and a pointer to that value. With that knowledge, we are also able to use interfaces like variable types. But what's so special about that? Well, because an interface points to a value, this means it technically can store any type of value. Here is an example of something we can do. I create a function called printType that takes a value with the type of interface as a parameter. Now I can do a switch statement on the type of the variable val. Case it's an integer, I will print the string int. Then I'll do the same for the string type and again for any of the other types. Back in main, I'll make some variables that store different kinds of values, and I'll pass those variables into the print type functions. When I run this file, you can see the result is printed based off the type of the given parameter for that function. I guess you could say the interface keyword is like the any keyword in TypeScript and other languages. So would you be surprised if they pretty much renamed it to that as well? Well, they did. Now, instead of writing this long word with braces on the end, you can just put the word any. Wow, doesn't that code look awfully similar to another language? Now then, you might think, okay, interfaces are cool and all, but what's so special about them? Well, let me tell you, we know that interfaces are implicit, not explicit, therefore you can satisfy interfaces made in the standard library. Now, what does that mean, and how can we utilize this? Let me show you an example using the error interface in Go. Now, you may not know this, especially if you're new to Go, but the actual error type itself is an interface with one method, error. Therefore, we can make our own errors using this idea. Here, I create a struct validation error with two properties, field and message both string types. Then I can give it a method error that returns a string. This, therefore, complements the interface. Now, I can also give it custom functionality. Here, I just format the error message nicely. Then I write a basic string validation function that returns an error. In main, I check if I receive an error from the function and handle it. When I run the program, it works and prints our custom error message. Error isn't the only interface where you can do things like this with. Here's a couple more examples. An example with IO Reader and IO Writer. An example with Sort. And an example with Stringer. Just do your research and experiment. I love Go's interface system. Use it wherever you can. It could definitely save you some extra coding. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, leave a like and subscribe.